Welcome to the Business of Beauty, where we help beauty entrepreneurs in building their business and reaching their dreams. This is your host, David Lee. Our guest today helps beauty practitioners launch and grow their business. She is proud of building a successful six-figure beauty business from the ground up. Her superpower is creating systems in her business that simplify her workflow so she can work smarter, not harder. Welcome to the show, Jenny Frieza at Jenny Frieza Beauty and Copal Clean Beauty. Thank you, David. Good to be here. Yeah, same here. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad uh, you're on the show. Uh, we have a, a lot to discuss. Uh, you know, prior to the show, you were mentioning you're getting ready to open up uh, or reopen essentially, right? Yeah. Your, your uh, brick and mortar location on the service side, um, but you were able to open up on the, on the retail side in, back, in, back in May. So yes. uh, let's, let's jump right in. So can you tell us a little bit more about your, your, uh, your store? Yeah, absolutely. So we operate as a retail destination and a holistic spa. And we currently provide holistic facials and brow services, mostly brows. So that's what we'll be jumping into tomorrow when we reopen. We don't have the green light yet on facials or any other spa services. Okay. Um, but what's really unique about the shop is that we retail about 30 different indie beauty brands. So that is something I have a big passion for, researching mm -hmm. the brands and the ingredients. And my mission there was really just to create a safe space for women, actually for everyone to come and shop uh, healthy cosmetics. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now you know, you mentioned why just the brow, why, you know, why not the full facial? Like what is so unique about that? And I guess, is it the state restricting that? Yes, I, I'm sure every state is different right now, but here in Connecticut, we do have the green light to uh, do brow waxing because that falls under the hair salon opening. Um, so we can do that. People can still wear their mask and we can still groom yeah, their yeah. eyebrows, which is really okay. exciting. That's a, yeah. you know, that's a huge part of our business at Cobalt. So I'm really excited that we can open the doors and welcome back all of our brow clients tomorrow. Very excited nice. for it. Nice. It'll be a, a new way of doing it, but it's going to be really great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, can you share a little bit more on the the steps that led or that are leading up to i guess the big re-grand opening right of, of like tomorrow's day like is there any any things uh any items that you had to do uh to prep for tomorrow absolutely so we did set in place some new guidelines for when uh, our visitors come in we are requiring everyone to wear a mask um clients and staff we yeah. have set up markers throughout the store for yeah. social distancing. Um, and then of course our working stations, we have um, all CDC approved disinfectants that we are gonna be using throughout the day and in between all of our clients. Um, so that was a certificate that I received a few weeks ago um, online through universal companies through a company called rejuvenate it was very helpful they actually provided tons of resources for um, other beauty you know environments like spas and salons so we have new open and close checklists we have um, we created something called a sanitation station and this was really about creating safety but also comfort for our clients who are coming through the store to feel safe. Um, so we have a whole, right upon entry, we have a whole table set up with disposable gloves and mm. face masks and hand sanitizer and bottled waters that are covered so people can kind of help themselves there. Nice, nice. So yeah. even if let's say a client didn't have a mask, we're like, okay, well, grab a mask, here's a mask, <laughs> put it on. Right. We wanted to make sure we took the guesswork out of it for everybody so that we can make sure that people feel welcome because it is a new normal um, yeah. and it does feel a little strange at moments. We wanted to make sure that we made it um, as comfortable as we possibly could with mm -hmm. the circumstances. So yeah, so leading up to tomorrow's opening, what has been the most challenging piece for you? Honestly, um, you know, when you're working in a service 
based business, you are counting on your service providers to come back to work. And so through COVID, yeah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, we've definitely faced some challenges with having the right amount of support to open the doors. So Mm -hmm. um, I've been pivoting myself and I've actually stepped away from the service floor a little over a year ago, but with the new circumstances, I will be on the front line servicing my clients tomorrow so yeah yeah um, and, and, and i'm more. glad you mentioned that because that's been one of the challenges i've 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 been hearing from a lot of different business owners they're like yeah you know the uh unemployment uh benefits they're way way be- better and they don't even have to work so it's kind of tough to bring them back but then you know like i've talked to uh other lawyers and and and, and uh other I guess uh, professionals like accountants and and they, they're they're saying yeah sometimes you gotta have to be the bad guy as the as the owner and say okay well we have a business we have to run and mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie to the government and say all right well you're gonna go and collect unemployment when right. I have a perfectly you know wonderful job and position here right. for you and right. plus it's really not sustainable right it's just like Right. Like no one can really, you know, not work and get paid, right? <laughs> For it. we have to, we have to work to to be compensated, right? 100%. So it's like it's it's not sustainable anyway. So I, I think this is a temporary thing. I mean, it is a temporary thing. I hope it's, just, so. it's just you know how how uh, how it's interesting to see how other business owners are kind of getting through this. I think most aren't aren't really forcing their staff. I think overall you know, their staff, their team understands like, hey, right. this, we're here as a team, we're here as a business, right? We right. have to get through right. this. Right. It's a delicate uh, situation, but I do hope more business owners talk about it. Just in yeah. this last week, connecting with some of my colleagues, I realized I was not alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're right, at the end of the day, you want to be, you know, you want to be a human, you want to speak to your staff and in your employees person to person and yeah. hear what their concerns are. And then still at the end of the day, I do have a business to run and a you know clientele waiting to come in. I mean, one of the beautiful things about the beauty industry is I really truly feel like we are recession proof. People, I think the beauty industry, our clients need us now more than ever for a little self love. So the business is there. And it is challenging when you can't meet that demand because of yeah. the unemployment issue. But um, yeah. you know, as business owners, that's that's what we do. We <laughs> rise above, we rise up, and we pivot, and we find new ways of doing things, and we move forward. Yeah, yeah. One of the things um, I've seen other business owners do is uh, they were able to apply for the PPP, and right. and with the PPP, they were able to bring the team back. As a matter of fact, they even give them a, a nice, you know, small bonus to thank them. Like, hey, thanks for coming sure. back. Here's a little incentive to, to kind of transition into back into the workforce, right? Absolutely. So that, that's one option, you know, one suggestion sure. for viewers out there that are, that are listening in. Sure, um, and flexibility too. I tried to be really flexible with my offerings, with my staff, you know, flexible hours and, you know, child care and making arrangements mm-hmm. and things like that. I think it was just a time to really hear what people's concerns are and try to modify just a little bit yeah. um, what your normal expectations would be for someone. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, the idea is everyone's suffering, right? Everyone's having a difficult time. If everyone was a little bit more supportive and everyone kind of, um, um, you know, took on a little bit more ownership and supported each other, we will all be able to kind of get through this. And that that's really the idea, right? Absolutely. Um, so very, very good. Um, and, you know, thanks for, you know, sharing that. Um, now, uh, let's kind of step back and go back, go into a time machine and kind of go back in time. <laughs> kind of like how, you know, you, uh, you got to where you're at today. Um, sure. So let's, you know, l- so tell me, where would you like to start? Where do I start? Oh my goodness. Um, Well, I have always loved the beauty industry from a very young age. Um, Some of my very first jobs as a teenager uh, working in hair salons. Um, But I spent majority of my career working in retail cosmetics as an international makeup artist for Trish McAvoy um, and as a resident makeup artist for her in New York City. So 
I had the great pleasure and fortune to work with um, a really awesome company and learn both the business side of things. Trish is considered kind of a smaller company when you compare to like the Chanel's and the Estee Lauder's of the world. Mm -hmm. So I got to work really closely with her and learn a lot about the business side. Um, and then I got the creative um, experience working in New York City and working with uh, brides, doing their makeup and yeah. fashion shows and photo shoots. So that was where I spent the majority of my career. Mm. And then about uh, almost 15 years ago, I met my husband, life was changing. I moved out of the city back to Connecticut. Mm. Um, and I've always felt like I had an entrepreneurial spirit. So I decided to leave retail cosmetics and at the time, start my own traveling bridal beauty team. Oh. Um, and so I did that for about five years yeah. and realized quickly that while my brides were coming from Boston and New York, the moms of the brides lived in here in Connecticut and they would be coming to see me to get their eyebrows done. Yeah. And so I sort of organically established a, 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 a clientele doing brow styling, which is my absolute yeah. favorite passion of all of the services that I do. Nice. Um, but really the, the turning point for me was uh, back about seven or eight years ago, I had a couple of friends all call me within a short amount of time to tell me that their moms were diagnosed with breast cancer. And it just sort of stopped me in my tracks and made me kind of take a second look at the products that I was using in my bridal kit and selling, you know, in my little studio at the time, I was just a one woman show. Mm -hmm. um, and I basically just went on like this research like path for a good year. Mm. And once I was able to recognize that there were safer options and that we didn't have to make that compromise, mm. that changed everything. That was when I knew I had to open a store here on the shoreline and present mm. these safer options for women. and. And that was how Culpa was born about five years ago. I moved out of my little one woman show. I started renting a adorable storefront here in Madison. I hired my first employee and we grew tremendously in that five years. Nice, nice. Now, yeah. okay, so, uh, well, thank you for sharing, you know, that your journey. <laughs> now let's, sure. let's, let's, so now today, do you still uh, do the bridal shows as part of, your offering or is it more more of the brick and mortar like they come in and and th that's when they get the service yeah i i'm a hundred percent brick and mortar now i have stepped away from doing um, the bridal work probably about four years ago and i think this was a really valuable lesson for myself and probably other um you know beauty entrepreneurs out there it yeah. was one of those things that I just started reevaluating which parts of my job were bringing me joy. Uh, and I was just feeling yeah. an enormous amount of stress. And um, <laughs> I, I loved my brides, of course. Yeah. Um, but I just didn't enjoy the schedule anymore. I didn't enjoy yeah. getting in my car. And so it was a really good example of not doing something and actually tripling my revenue when I focused on the things that meant something to me mm. so I think a lot of times we're scared to say no to something or to remove yeah. something out of business because oh my gosh yeah you know what's gonna happen now but for me I learned something so valuable it was just like having to refocus and put mm -hmm. all my energy towards something that really made sense to me actually yeah. helped me grow it was almost like one step back got me three steps ahead yeah now uh, do you have any tips, any pointers on, you know, someone that's trying to do that? They've realized like, why am I doing this, right? I've been doing this for over 10 years and I, 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 I don't enjoy it anymore, but I do have something else that I do enjoy. Um, but I, I just can't let go of this other item because maybe that's 80% of my revenue, 80% of my income. Um, what would you say, well, you know, to help that person to kind of get through that? Takes a little, you know, soul searching. You really have to come from a place of understanding your why, like, why are you doing it? Because then you can really kind of design a roadmap that'll get you where you need to, 
to go. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we're not clear on what that why is. And yeah. we end up going off in different directions. And once I realized that my why was to help mm -hmm. women um, make better choices to choose safer cosmetics, yeah. it was not as scary to walk away from the bridal anymore. Okay. You know, the passion. Yeah. fueled me in the direction. Um, but at the same time, you have to be, you know, a little strategic with it. You're not going to want to be hasty and just say, okay, I'm done with this and start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> kind of, yeah, you know, I didn't do that. I, I, I took my time and I did my yeah. research and I slowly waned myself off the weddings mm -hmm. little by little while okay. I built the other business. So I wasn't yeah. leaving myself in a compromised financial, you know, yeah. bind. And so when you, well, you started you started weaning off like the bridal side um what did that look like did, did you did you start declining additional jobs and trying to trying to get more on the other side well i did it in two parts uh the first part was i first just set myself some guidelines Mm. Um, and said, I'm only, you know, instead of doing 35 weddings, I'm only going to do 10 weddings this year. Uh, okay. Um, yep. and so setting then, targets. Yes. Setting targets. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also, at that point, had so many amazing other artists around me. So yeah. I worked in collaboration with other freelancers who wanted to have a contract with me. Mm. And so I would yeah. take my 10 weddings and then contract out another artist for the other 20. So yeah. I still meet yeah. my you know, my, my target numbers, yeah, but I was yeah. easing myself out of it. And then eventually I just gate for like two years. I just, you know, contracted all of them out. Nice. And then eventually I was set up in my store and I realized I didn't really, if I, if I didn't want to do that, I didn't have to do that anymore. Yeah. And yeah. So and the nice thing about it, when you, when you did the subcontract, at least you were making something right. Rather than sure. not getting anything at all. So that was a nice transition. Yeah. So from, you doing a hundred percent of the work, you're you're now now doing maybe the billing, the processing, the marketing, the sales. So that's like twenty percent of the work, right? And eventually you're like, okay, well, you know what? I have my other business ready to go a hundred percent. I don't really necessarily need this anymore. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's like a step, right? Multiple steps. You didn't you didn't just do this crazy leap and say, yeah. you know what, I'm gonna quit cold turkey. <laughs> right. No, shut down my business and start a new one tomorrow. <laughs> Not at all. It was about a three year process, mm, okay. you know, and I should mention that I, in that process did outsource some of the work that I didn't have the bandwidth for anymore. So when yeah. I, while I was trying to grow the spa business and the brick and mortar, yeah. I certainly couldn't be at my computer corresponding to bridal clients doing their contracts all day. Mm -hmm. So I had, you know, sourced that element out pretty early on to free mm -hmm. me up to work on the other part. So yeah, no, right. definitely was not a switch that I flipped. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not a, not a three year process, but yeah. it was, a, it was a great decision for me. Yep. And I love what you, you are, are, are sharing and what you're saying, because a lot of solopreneurs don't think the way you do. They, they think, you know what, I'm going to take on all the work. I'm going to do everything. Well, reality is you only have 24 hours, right? And there's only seven days a week. It's not like eight days a week, or there's no 26 hour, 25th hour, right? Of the day. Yeah. There's only 24 hours, just like every other human being out there. So what you've decided to do to, in order to kind of maintain and grow and, and pivot, you start looking at, you know, okay, how can I hire people? How can I outsource, you know, some of the work that I don't like to do, um, or I, I can focus on some of the other pieces. So I love okay. that. Now, um, others, one of the, one of the responses I would get would be like, oh, that's just too scary. You know, that's just crazy. Hiring someone, I can barely manage myself, right? Uh, by hiring someone, worrying about someone else, uh, that sounds like a lot of work. So uh, how would you respond to that? <laughs> it is some work. Yeah. <laughs> it it, it, it's a question you have to ask yourself, uh, how far do you want to go with growing and scaling your business? Yeah. Um, so for me, I knew that I wanted to reach certain marks and I was not going to be able to do all of that myself. So. Yeah. I've always been a believer in the do, document, delegate kind of yeah. system. So like I have sat in every role of my business over the last 10 years, everything from the service provider to yeah. the receptionist to the buyer. So once I was able to sit in every single role, I was mm -hmm. able to 
document all of that into a store manual. So when it came mm. time to have to hire someone yeah. to take on one of those roles, it was so much easier to train them and to give them yeah. an onboard training to take over the role because everything was right there and writing for them. Nice, nice, wow. Yeah. So so there's a little bit of like work to do, right? Just a little sure. bit, right? <laughs> a little bit all. Yeah, so you gotta, you gotta go through it first then so. document, right? I, I, I would call that like the uh, SOP or standard operating procedures, right? Sure. Um, but procedures in general, right? Th these sure. are the steps. This is how you do it. Um, not only for yourself as a reminder, but or your future hire. Then mm -hmm. write down, all, look at all your, your processes, right? Mm -hmm. And then hire that person. To, and then hire that person. Then hire the person. And then for that person, they're going to love you because they're, they're gonna be like, what? You're not making things up as uh, as we're trying to run the business here. I actually have right. instruction sets to follow, right? Right. And right. I can I can look at this and ask you more questions based off of these steps rather than I have no idea. Because imagine when when someone anyone right new is hired, they're coming into this unknown business, unknown world. Right. Even if they are an expert in the beauty you know industry, they don't know mm -hmm. your business, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah that's, that's, now the other question would be like, okay, well, what if I have all that? I have all the SOPs. I, I you know, I documented it and now I am ready to hire my first hire. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, would, what would you say to that? Well, it's a, uh, it's an area that I, I think through this COVID experience, because in many ways I am kind of building again from the ground up since I am walking into this only with an administrative assistant, but without any service providers, mm -hmm. I find myself being faced with that, that very question right now. Mm. And for me, I, I can tell you honestly, I, I feel like that's actually not my strong point. So I would, I'm planning to try to find someone whose specialty is in HR mm. and can screen the candidates for me. Yeah. Um, to have, you know, the experience that I need for the yeah. particular role. I've, I've, I feel like that hasn't always been my strong point. So I, mm -hmm. I also think as beauty entrepreneurs or any entrepreneur, you mm -hmm. need to understand where your strengths are. Yes. And for me, yes. that was, has not been one of them. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be seeking out additional help uh, with mm -hmm. someone who specializes in hiring. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for being so candid. And and for viewers that are watching, this is the reality, right? It's not like on television or on anywhere you see like, mm -hmm. oh man, this is one amazing or successful entrepreneur. They are perfect in every way. No, no that's not the reality. It's, 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 you know, they, entrepreneurs focus on, they've realized right away, as sooner the better, what their strengths and weaknesses are. They, they double down on their strengths and they find support on their weakness, right? Um, you know, like I, I realized, you know, I wish I realized sooner, I'm terrible at accounting, you know, and, and you know, I, I, I dread doing reconciliations. So yeah. what I do, right? I hire a bookkeeper, I hire an accountant, I hire, I talk to my CPA and drive them nuts, right? That's, I don't, yeah. I, rather than trying to figure it out myself, you know, focus True. on your core, ask True. for help, get mentors, you know, build, sure. that's how you can build up your team much quicker. Right. Absolutely. And kind of struggle along. Hmm? Yeah. And that's a process too, because I feel like when you, when I think back to when I was first starting, you can't necessarily afford to hire or resource. I certainly yeah. couldn't have afforded like a, an HR person back in yeah. the early days. So you, mm -hmm. you do, you know, but again, that's also part of the learning. That's how yeah. you learn what your strength and what your weaknesses are. Yeah. So don't, my advice would be like, don't be afraid to, to take on those responsibilities if you're just getting started, yeah. but it, just make sure you're recognizing what the strengths are yeah. and what the weaknesses are and not making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. And the key part is, you know, not giving up, right? It's easy okay. to, after a while you're like, you know, you know, one of the things I hear, I see a lot too, um, way more than I, I really should. It's like, I, I see, I get the look in their eyes and the motion of like, I've, I've given up hiring people, you know, and even for me, I, I've, I've struggled mm -hmm. with hiring salespeople. Like sure. I, I've given up on, on trying to hire the right salesperson, but rather because there's been so many failures and it's been beat up so many times, 
But the important thing is, you know, think of it this way, right? If others, if other businesses are able to hire people, are able to grow successfully, you can too, right? It's just Absolutely. figuring out, figuring out what the formula is. Yeah, right? don't give up. <laughs> yeah, Keep don't going. give up. Yes. We always say, you know, we have a certain amount of grit as uh, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. you, you know, and I, and I think if, if COVID hasn't been an example of not giving up, <laughs> you know, I don't know what. Uh, what yeah, exactly. I, I mentioned like, hey, if any business can survive through COVID, they can pretty much survive through anything. <laughs> I think so, for sure. Uh, for sure. Yeah, I love that. Uh, so now um, you have your your administrator. Um, now I guess what is uh, oh, so? Tell us when when did you start your like your online side of your of your business? Sure. Well, this was something actually, believe it or not, I had my online store before mm -hmm. it was a brick and mortar, oh, um, which okay. at the time wasn't intentional. But looking back, I was like, that was that was really helpful. I think having the e-commerce platform okay. completely 100% set up and in place mm -hmm. is what actually helped Copal stay afloat during this crisis mm. because we were able to lean into one of our core values of yeah. education and double down on our social media mm -hmm. and convert our audience over to the online store. Yeah. So yeah, I started Copal as an online store about four years ago mm -hmm. um, when my brand was just under my name. Originally, my entire business was just Jenny Fraser Beauty. Okay. And so Copal was just the online store. And I thought, how can I, how can I do this where I won't confuse my local clientele, you mm -hmm. know? And so uh, I think over the course of two years, they knew that I had the online store called yeah. Copal. So when it came time for it to be the sign on the brick and mortar, they were like, oh yeah, okay, we get it. That's your online store. Yes, you merged them now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they, we use a platform called Shopify, okay. um, which is a pretty well-known and robust platform and pretty user-friendly for a non-techie person like myself. And they have a really <laughs> terrific um, uh, help center. And I've I've really enjoyed my my partnership with with Shopify. So good. very good. grateful yeah. to have the online presence. I mean, that is how we that was how we survived for the last two and a half months. Oh, through online yeah. sales now so so you said it was four years ago that you started or or mm -hmm. before that four so years you, ago okay so then at what point did you have your brick and mortar um well about let's see uh, about five years ago it was a year before yeah oh so you did have your brick and mortar and then yeah. you had your online store a year later yeah. right yes Okay. Yes, okay. So helpful. we're yeah. looking at like 2015 and then 2016, right? Yeah. Around yeah. that time period. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, was it difficult setting up the online store? Um, it was a little tricky. It was time consuming. It wasn't difficult. I, again, this was an area where I knew I was going to need to work with someone. Um, I'm not okay. a developer. Okay. Um, so did work with someone on some graphic design elements mm. and I did work with someone on the developer part of side, you know, side of things. And mm -hmm. it was more just time consuming. It wasn't yeah. hard. It was more just time consuming. And we have, like I said earlier, about 30 different brands all with, mm. you know, I don't know, a few hundred SKUs in each brand. Wow. So that's yeah. a lot of data entry so it yeah. was more just the time of putting all of the images in and setting yeah. up all the back end of mm -hmm. things but it really it, it was not challenging I, mm -hmm. I would tell anybody who feels uh scared of that or uh, feels like they're not you know tech savvy to not mm -hmm. let that get in the way yeah. for me i mean there's several platforms to use mm -hmm. um but for us shopify has been really really terrific nice nice um the so from from the point of okay now you have the site ready you have all your products on there um the marketing side how did you get uh like people to go to your site and start buying your products yeah so we did um marketing email marketing really was huge so because we had a really solid uh email list already in place mm -hmm. from okay. the store i was able to you know create um, you know, email 
newsletters to our clients, mm -hmm. which gives us really high conversions because they yeah. love those emails in their inbox. And then mm -hmm. ultimately that brings them over to the website and click and yeah. shop. Yep. Um, we did do a little bit of investing in some ads, but not too much. Okay. Um, yeah. And then just local, like local word of mouth and mm. uh, community outreach okay. for sure helped us, but you know, kind of small scale marketing budget and just okay. doing what you can to, to try to get the word out there. Okay. So most of it sounds like it's, it's, uh, uh more organic. And I like what you mentioned there with the email list. So many businesses don't do that. Like start today. If you have a website, you know, start now, right? It's not that hard setting it up. Like, Hey, join our newsletter. You can send out a newsletter maybe once a month, you know, bare minimum. Um, but you, you're able to start collecting email addresses because sure. look what happened with, um, uh, with, with, you know, COVID right. For, right. for businesses that did not have that database of, of yeah. email addresses, what do they have to do? They have to manually call each customer by phone, one at a time, sure. say, hey, this is what's going on, we're closed on this day, we're open on this day, you know, this is the reopening, right? It, it's, it, it's a lot more work. So I start building up work. that email list, then, right, uh, as Jenny has mentioned, when you have your online store, you can promote uh, yeah. your, you know, your online store through that list. I love that. Sure. Um, I see a lot of younger entrepreneurs spending a, an enormous amount of time on social platforms, which is fantastic. Mm, yeah. But we have to remember that we don't own those contacts. Yeah, platforms. Yeah. I mean, I, I wish I owned Facebook or Instagram, <laughs> right? I don't. <laughs> no, your email list is really the only thing that you truly have a hold of and that you yeah. own. And yeah. it is direct direct communication with your clients. There really yeah. is no better way. I, I can't emphasize it enough to, if you yeah. haven't started growing your email list, that should be, you know, the number one marketing thing you should do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and then, okay. So all that is organic. Uh, you, you, you know, you're, you're building it up, you're building it up. Um, any, any, any like, um, uh, advice or feedback during that time from, you know, now you have your brick and mortar running, you have your, your online store running. What would be some of the hurdles that, that you would share with the entrepreneur and say, Hey, watch out for these things when you're trying to operate these two businesses all under one roof. Sure. So is the question really, just so I'm clear, are you asking like, what else did I do in terms of marketing once the once um, the, not so much what else, but more of like any challenges, any hurdles that, oh. that you were going through during that period from like 2016 to 2019, right? Pre-COVID days. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So I think at a certain point when you're growing your business, you mm -hmm. start to look at like client retention and how often mm -hmm. clients are coming through the door, right? Yeah. So how can you maximize that? And I, I remember realizing like we were, we were having clients come back, but we weren't really maximizing that time that they were in the store. And so I uh, felt like at the time, one of the solutions that we came up with was to create different add-ons based on clients' feedback. Mm. Uh, for example, we do a lot of brow waxing, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. So at the end of our brow styling session, we would do this quick little like massage around their, you know, orbital bone on their temple. Yeah. And every time someone would leave, the, oh, that was the, the best part of my brow visit. And so <laughs> I realized, oh my gosh, I bet if we said we can do a 10 minute add on and make it right. like a chakra energy massage, ah. we would, you know, change, $30 service to a $45 service in the yeah. same amount of time. Yeah. And yeah. So that was one way that we saw a challenge and found a solution to it and yeah. continued to grow. Love it. Love it. And your, your clients are happier. They get this nice massage, right? And they're super happy at the end. So yeah, yeah I love that. I love that. So yeah. thinking and about you try something and it's like, you, you know, you try something, you throw it against the wall and it it sticks and other times it doesn't. I think you just have to be yeah. willing to try something new and yeah. see if it works. Yeah. Yeah. I love now that. Um, yeah. Now coming up to the like beginning of 2020 now, actually now in the beginning of 2020, 
like what were your original plans? And then of course, you know, plans got sidetracked. Everything got sidetracked. Um, <laughs> my business was in the best place it had ever been. Yeah. Um, you know, we were having unprecedented growth year after year for the last three years. And mm -hmm. we hit a marker at, you know, we finished 2019, it, our best and strongest year. So we nice. the ground running in 2020. It was yeah. like off to an incredible start. Yep. Um, and for me, I was literally at the finish line in terms of the entire business was functioning 100% without me there. Nice. Yeah. I was days away from my completing my training with my new store manager. Yeah. I had both of my estheticians up yeah. running and trained. We were bringing in new brands. We were doing all yeah. kinds of amazing events in the store. That was another way we, we learned to scale in the last few years by doing yeah. wellness events. But, um, and literally COVID happened and it just sort of, you know, wiped all of that away. And so, Oh my goodness. What was the question again? <laughs> yeah. So uh, changes like you have all this, all, all these different things in place. Right. And yeah. can you kind of share through like your, your process of like, you know, like, was it, how big of a surprise was it? Like, did, were you like watching TV one day and you know, like the governor just said, we are on now on lockdown and it's, we don't know when lockdown will be, will be ending. I mean like, was I it mean, that point I, in time? We're like, oh my God, what am I going to do with my business here? I was actually traveling. Um, mm. I was in New Mexico the week that things started to really get hairy in Connecticut. Mm. Okay. Um, and I got off the plane on a Friday and closed my store that Monday. Oh, it wow. was a, a week before the state mandate. And yeah. I did that out of safety of my staff. Yeah. Um, and you know, to answer your question, I, I don't know. I mean, I've had, I've had curve balls thrown my way. I've had challenges. Yeah. Uh, you just, there's nothing you could have done to have prepared for something yeah. like this. It was so, it was so shocking. Um, mm -hmm. even making the decision to close felt very like surreal. Like I was like, I was yeah. pretty sure we were just going to be open again in two weeks at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Everyone had that hope me. like, Oh, you know what? It's going to be open in two weeks. No, no big deal. It's just going to blow by. Right. But the problem is it's, this is a, this is a virus. So you, you can't tell, yeah. tell the virus, yeah. Hey, you know what? Can you just chill here for two weeks and then go away? Right. That, that doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah. But that did not happen. So mm -hmm. probably on a, week two or three, I started to realize that we needed to come up with a pivoting plan to mm. try to, you know, keep things, at least stay in communication with our Copal community yeah. and our clients, um, and to figure out how we can, you know, still deliver some kind of value to them and how we can make their lives easier. And mm -hmm. one of the things we came up with at the time uh, was doing a, what we called Copal virtual hangouts. And so mm. every week on our Instagram, we would have, we would invite um, other small business owners to come and do a discussion on either health, beauty, or wellness. Nice. And nice. that was a really cool way to keep communicating with our, with our audience and to stay in touch with them during a very difficult time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good to hear. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, so and then anything else that you've done during that time to kind of, uh, you know, stay, you know, stay on top of mind and, and business, uh, changes from that point. We just doubled down on our social media efforts. Mm -hmm. Um, we, um, what else did we do? We started offering virtual offerings. Mm -hmm. Um, I can put pen to paper up with a, a clean line skin condition you could oh, okay i'm um, sorry jenny you, you broke up for a second oh. there um oh, okay can you hear me yeah uh, just uh, just just a little bit uh a uh, uh lag there oh, okay give it a I'm give back. it a second I... zoom is thinking <laughs> okay let me okay. know i think oh yes we're good now okay good yeah. I'm so sorry. That no, it's okay. My it's okay. It's it glitch. It glitches every so often. Um, 
Um, so yeah, we, we started offering some, am I stuck again? Yeah, no, 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 you're good. Yeah, you start offering like consultations virtual or consultations. virtual consultations. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nice, nice. So our clients were really, they were, they were just so happy. I think when you have a really loyal following, which is what yeah. hopefully you're, you're going for, right? Mm -hmm. The The women in our community really just, they want it to support us. I'm not even so sure some of our customers needed that mascara or their lipstick. <laughs> I don't need them. <laughs> we considering no one was wearing makeup, but it just yeah. felt heartwarming that they wanted to support us. Yeah, that's nice. On social media, we did virtual consultants. We did the Copal Hangouts on Instagram. Regular email newsletter. Um, that was the best we could stay in being able to be in, you know, with people. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, well, um, you know, I've taken a lot of your time already, so thank you so much for being on the show. Um, yeah. I guess what, you know, let's, let's talk about the future, you know, let's talk about what your plans moving forward, you know, post COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, and then we'll wrap up with how, you know, how can our audience reach you? You know, so sure. Those two things. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's, it's certainly a, a little bit of an uncertain time, but, mm -hmm. um, not going to give up. We are going to move ahead with, as I said, we're opening the store tomorrow. I'm mm -hmm. going to be hiring Good someone luck. to help and we're going to, you know, build our team back up and I, you know, and just start getting back to business as usual, hopefully sooner than later. And, um, and then for me personally, I'm just really excited to help other young entrepreneurs. Um, I feel like despite the challenges, there's really no better time for you to, to, to go out there and make your dreams come true and to start a beauty business. So that's, that's my plan is to, to really pour my heart into, you know, coaching and other young uh, beauty professionals. Nice, nice. Yeah. And actually speaking of that, you do, you do, do uh, offer coaching right yeah uh let's touch up on that real quick like do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching do you have like a coaching course or coaching program like what do you do on the coaching coaching side yeah so right now i do a one-on-one -on -one coaching and that's through my jenny Fraza website which is mm -hmm. jenny mm -hmm. and um or through my instagram people can dm me there and i have a you know a seven week course that i teach people everything from you know growing your audience to understanding your mission vision purpose to a you know beauty business roadmap and mm -hmm. accountability and you know all that good stuff so it's a, it's a really it, it, for me it, it's a big part of fulfilling my heart to help other women achieve their success so nice nice yeah, yeah. good to hear you know uh, and again thank you so much for being on the show yeah. uh, you mentioned a few of those sites is there any any other um uh, way that our viewers can reach you so your instagram your website yeah. sure so if you're interested in clean beauty you can find us at copalcleanbeauty.com mm -hmm. and our instagram is at copalcleanbeauty and if you're interested in beauty uh business mentoring you can reach me at jennyfraza.com or on instagram at jennyfrazabeauty nice well thank you so much and uh, uh viewers i hope you enjoyed this episode and we will see you next time bye thank you david <laughs> thank take you. care Take care. Hey, beautypreneurs. Take care. I'm David. My team and I created a website kit for fellow entrepreneurs looking to grow their business online, whether it's e-commerce or a service-based business. We've got you covered. This will also help us continue our webcasts and provide valuable knowledge to countless beauty entrepreneurs watching. For more details, check out our website kits at beautybiz.info forward slash website kits. If you like the videos that we make, you can support us by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. Thanks, we'll see you next time.